Okay, so hello, hello, nice to meet you, nice to meet you online at Five Flavors Film Festival. We are very happy to have the uh, opportunity to screen your movie, which we find really interesting and uh, uh, make, makes me not only interested in the main character's story, but only uh, also very nostalgic about Hong Kong, where I miss the city so much. <laughs> oh, you used to live there? You've been there before? Uh, yeah. So uh, let me ask you the first question. Uh, what was your direct ins uh, inspiration to make this project? Because it's not an usual melodrama. Yes, uh, I think uh, because the inspiration came from this book called The Oral Histories of Older Gay Men in Hong Kong. It's uh, a collection of 12 interviews of elderly gay men who are in their 70s years old. And after I read the book, I thought it was very interesting. So I contacted the writer and asked me to ask him to introduce some of the interviewees. And he said some of them have passed away already. So that made me feel that there's more an urgency to make this story. So I met up with some of the interviewees and heard their stories and then decided to write the screenplay uh, inspired by some of their experiences. So I guess it was not easy task to raise the money for such film with the not, not only the, the not very young and pretty cast, but also on the male love topic. Yes, I think when I first uh, showed the script to a few people, they say, oh, Ray, don't do it, don't do it. No one would want to see it because it's LGBT plus senior. So that was very difficult. Uh, we tried to apply for government funding, but they didn't give it to us because they think the project is not commercial enough. And uh, so we tried to find some other film investors and couldn't. So eventually we did a crowdfunding is how we, we eventually got it together uh, by doing a lot of table reads and then inviting people that are not from the film industry, uh, just ordinary people who might be interested in the topic and come and listen to the story being read and then fund it that way. Uh, so what about uh, original stories? Uh, have you talked to, to people from the, from the book? Uh, have you interviewed all the people? Yes, uh, I have interviewed some of them uh, who was in the book as uh, no longer alive. Uh, some of them I interviewed them and uh, heard their stories and then kind of inspired by their stories. But there isn't one story that is similar to the screenplay. Uh, I basically reimagine what it would be like if they meet now, today, and both of them have a family, and uh, how that would come out, you know. But uh, um, yes, so I interviewed quite a few, quite a lot of them actually. Mm -hmm. So what about the casting? Uh, I know that it was not an easy task too. <laughs> no, because of the age, because I think in Hong Kong, the actors nowadays, the younger ones are more open to playing LGBT roles. But because for this movie, they are 65 to 70 years old. So casting took me a whole year. I have met a lot of actors. Um, a lot of them, they wouldn't want to play gay because a lot of them, when they were younger, they were uh, martial arts. They do a lot of action. So they were very macho and they didn't really, really want to play gays. And uh, the ones that who said they are interested, they didn't want to kiss a man, didn't want to hold hands or things like that. So there weren't that many. Eventually, we got a, a, about a dozen of actors who said yes. So we did a chemistry test in order to find them. So it took a year. Yeah, it seems very difficult. And, um, but the, eff the uh, uh, effect is, is really brilliant. Like you, you can feel the chemistry between them and the turn, tenderness and all the stories really rich with the uh, emotions. Good, 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 good. Yes, I'm glad, yes. Um, but uh, I feel uh, like that also the city is one of the protagonists of your story because it's really, um, you, you can learn a lot about the history of Hong Kong and also see all the streets and uh, the cityscape. Uh, what, you, what was your ideas regarding the cinematography and choosing locations? 
Yes, I think uh, we want to find uh, areas that really represent their background, which is deep in Kalun side, not the kind of Hong Kong that sometimes we are used to seeing, like all the five stars hotels, big high rise building. We want to see an older part of Hong Kong, which represent them and also represent their struggles. Uh, and we were also, I was talking to the production designer, is that we want the find the scenes, the locations that is very ordinary and very grassroots and very blue collar, but yet at the same time able to create some kind of poetic, romantic images from it. So it's kind of like something exactly like the couple that seems very ordinary, two older men, nothing to look at, but yet at the same time when they are together, you can still be young, you can still have romance, you still can have that kind of beauty really and poetry that come out. So that was what we were trying to create uh, with the DP and with the production designer. Uh, and uh, how you work on the background of the stories of the pro protagonists? Because I, I feel that the biographies are also very rich and rep representative uh, for the Hong Kong people. Yes, I think um, a lot of it is through interviews. And then I also write a very, very long uh, background stories for each of the characters and then I will have the actors sit together and they will read out each other's backstories so that if they have to play a family then they know each other's histories and what is important in their lives so that they have a better understanding of each other especially because they have to play a family so we need to have that kind of a closeness between them. And uh the main one of the protagonists is also has also Chinese background, a Chinese uh, family. Uh, was it important to you to have this kind of biography in your story? Yes, I think because they represent, uh, because in Hong Kong, actually, a lot of the people immigrated from China uh, many years ago, especially um, after the Cultural Revolution. Uh, they want to escape to Hong Kong because it uh, was a British colony and it was just easier to earn a living. So uh, a lot of people came to Hong Kong and in the last 30 or 40 years, they really struggle and work very hard to make Hong Kong what it is today, which is a metropolitan city. So I really want to represent this group of people. They sacrifice so much and they sacrifice their own personal desires as well in order to serve the family and the city, they put their own personal uh, desires at the bottom of the priority. Everything else is about their job, about their families. And then they really look at themselves, what they really want at last. So I also want to represent that type of person in this movie. Mm. And w w speaking about family, what about younger generations of LGBT uh, people in Hong Kong now? Uh, what are their yeah. families thinking of the topic? Yeah. yeah, now it's very different. I think the younger generation is much more open, uh, particularly I think uh, people who are under 20 years old. Uh, I think just two days ago, I was invited to speak about my movie, Sook Sook and LGBT issues in a high school. And so this is something that is very different from when I was growing up in Hong Kong where uh, LGBT issues were taboo in school. Uh, so now the, the, the city is much more open in that sense. And you do see um, people who are 22, 23, around the age group will be holding hands in the street and people wouldn't say anything. Uh, which is very different from the characters in the movies where when they were in their younger days uh, homosexuality was illegal in Hong Kong. Uh, you could be arrested or if you meet someone you could be blackmailed. So it's very very different and therefore nowadays the younger generation can be very proud while this group of people they still carry a lot of shame of being gay because I interview a lot of them and even though they have been out for 20 or 30 years and they can talk about their boyfriends and anything, but when you talk about their deep desire about being a gay person, they still carry a lot of shame with them. They still have a lot of guilt. It's something that they couldn't get rid of because it has been in them for so many years. Mm. 
And I, I want to ask also about the relationship uh, between LGBT community and the church. Because in, in Poland, uh, it's quite shocking to see LGBT person being actively uh, engaged in the, in the Catholic church life. Yes, I think in Hong Kong, um, it's the uh, religious part is also actually quite anti-gay. But yet at the same time, there are a lot of, um, particularly the elder generation that I interview, a lot of them have uh, uh, Christian beliefs. So I asked them, I said, um, how do you find it? Can you, um, you know, accept them? So they said that, well, in a very typical Hong Kong fashion, they're very practical. They said, well, the parts that I feel that I can use, uh, I will accept. The parts that I don't think that is, I can use, I will forget about it in denial. I won't think about it. So that's how they deal with it. But it really shows that even though you're a gay person, even you can find a religion that gives you a peace of mind, um, they're still being discriminated because, you know, none of them could really be open and talk about their uh, homosexuality in the church still, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, speaking about the protagonists and uh, the way you portrayed them, um, maybe they are a bit unusual for a classical melodrama, but still it's a very classic melodrama story, appealing, I think, for also for the mainstream audience. And uh, how, how the, the film went into uh, in cinemas? Uh, I think we did very well. I think we opened in 60 cinemas in Hong Kong when it first started, which is quite a, a, a you know, milestone for LGBT movies in Hong Kong. Uh, so we were very lucky in that way. And uh, we did a lot of Q&A as well. And we had a lot of heterosexual couples who came to see the movie. And uh, they said, uh, this is the first gay movie I've ever seen in my life. So that is quite good in that sense that we were able to cross that bridge. And the movie is not just appeal to the LGBT community, but also to people outside of their circle as well. So uh, when we get, come to the melodrama topic, the, uh, the protagonists are, as we saw, said already, uh, a bit unusual, but the structure of the story, it's composed like a classical melodrama. So do you have any direct film inspirations in mind? Do you, do you watch melodrama, love some, uh, some classical films? Mm. I think I, I watch, but I like all kinds of movies. So I don't think there was one particular movie that uh, inspired this, but I always like uh, Arnie's movie. And uh, he does, his movie is always a bit melodrama as well, yeah. So do you prefer um, other genres? Do you have any favorite movies? <laughs> uh, which one? Of what? Uh, do, do you prefer any uh, like genre movies, action movies, or uh, the melodrama is your like favorite one? I, I, think I, I also like art house movies a lot as well. Yeah. Mm, okay. And uh, uh, we are talking a lot about LGBT issues, of course, but um, do you think such films as yours may be produced in Hong Kong uh, in a few next years because I'm a bit worried that the relationships between China and the uh, Hong Kong film industry is getting a bit uh, complicated now and as we know Wong Kar Wai already was afraid about what was going on when he made uh, Happy Together in 1997 so what, what uh, are the future prospects for Hong Kong cinema? I mean, for, for, for me personally, because I always make LGBT movies, so I never really uh, cater for the mainland Chinese market anyway, because LGBT movies are always censored in China and could never be shown. So my main market is international and also uh, Hong Kong as well. So um, it really depends on how things change with the new law. Uh, how much censorship they are going to affect it. Uh, at the moment, it's fine. I haven't seen anything drastic yet, but the law is so new. It's only a few months ago. And now we are in, have this pandemic as well. So a lot of things are being basically frozen. So we don't really know how things are going to proceed. I think we will have to wait until the pandemic is finished mm -hmm. and then see how this law really takes effect 
and how that is going to affect us. But in the meantime, I'm still writing, I'm still researching, and I'm just pursuing what I want to do. And I don't want to self-censor. I think the worst thing you can be is to start self-censoring yourself and not writing things because you are afraid of this and afraid of that. Uh, so um, we just soldier on and see how it goes. So that, that actually was my, my, my next question. What are you working on now? I'm uh, researching at the moment for a few different topics, but the only problem because of the pandemic is very difficult to meet new people. Mm. Um, so I have a, a couple of um, interviews um, that has been canceled. So that makes uh, uh, researching very hard. Um, so at the moment, I'm still waiting for uh, good ideas to come, but I've been asking people around, but um, yeah, it's slow. Okay, so I, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for your next project. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for connecting with Five Flavors viewers. <laughs> and I hope we can see each other in person when you make your ne next film. Yes, yes, I would love to come. So it would be so great. I've never been before, so I would love, love, love to come to Poland one day. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.